Okay, I want to officially welcome everyone, and um, I'm really grateful that you folks have come down here. You know, right before the holidays, you probably have other things to do besides coming to the office and getting your eyes treated. Uh, but, you know, I appreciate you being here, and it's my job to do everything I can to make the trip worthwhile. And um, I'd like to begin by, by talking about uh, kind of my philosophy of treating eye problems. You know, I started my career as a surgeon. I thought that there wasn't any eye disease that I couldn't treat by cutting it, doing surgery on it. And then gradually, over the course of my surgical career, I found that uh, many people with chronic disease, uh, you know, these people that were told nothing that can be done. You know, when you're young, you think you have all the answers. And I thought I had all the answers. I thought that no one would come into my practice and leave without an improvement of vision. But over the years, I became very frustrated because many of my patients were losing vision and I didn't have the answer. So I'm going to go into detail about the different modalities that we use every day. But for today, um, I want to give you my kind of like my overall perspective, and I call, I call it the hierarchy of healing, or the levels of healing. And you're the first group that I'm actually going to share this with. Uh, just We had a long flight from Italy, and I had a time to just kind of reflect and think about things. So probably the lowest approach to healing is the surgical and medical approach. They um, treat the body as if the body doesn't have a wisdom, that you're a machine. If it's broke, operate on it, or they use uh, a, a pharmaceutical drug. And, you know, as we know, the pharmaceutical drugs uh, have a lot of toxic side effects. And the pharmaceutical drugs really don't make an attempt to cure disease. You know, if you have high blood pressure and go to the doctor, he gives you hypertensive medicine, doesn't talk about curing it, right? Take this drug. Doc, how long am I going to have to use the drug? rest of your life. Chances are you're going to get a second drug, maybe a third. So they're actually really maintaining disease. Now, of course, the surgical approach is a little bit more aggressive. It's a, the disease part of your body, just cut it out. And sometimes it's necessary. If you have acute appendicitis, you know, you're not going to do microcurrent or homeopathy. You're going to want to get rid of that disease part of the body. So that's the medical and surgical approach. And I would say probably 80% of medicine uses that approach. Uh, you, you see it every day when you turn on TV, big pharma. When you go to the doctor, you know, talking about surgery. Because that's essentially how, how eye doctors make money, by operating. So, you know, there's a joke if you, if you pay a man enough money, or if a man is paid money to cut off your leg, he's going to figure out a way why your leg needs to be cut off. So that's the same thing with ophthalmologists. They make their money with cataract surgery, and they're going to figure out why you need cataract surgery. So that's the medical and surgical approach. Now, there's been a new trend called functional medicine. Um, have you heard about functional medicine? where doctors take a different approach. They look at, let's try to strengthen your body, uh, maybe with hormones, maybe vitamins, nu nu nutrients. Uh, they'll do a battery of tests, uh, but they use less toxic material. That's functional medicine. Maybe your thyroid's low, whatever. So that's the functional approach. And probably about half of what we do here in our office is the functional approach. We're going to find out if you're deficient in certain minerals and treat it. We're going to find out if you have a nutritional deficiency. We're going to use microcurrent, which uses low energy to try to stimulate your body to heal. We're also going to use light therapy. These are all functional approaches. Ozone therapy, functioning, trying to get your body to function better. Does that make sense? Now, that's the second rung. The third rung is the homeopathic approach. And most people don't understand homeopathy, and I'm going to give a lecture on that. Homeopathy believes that the body has an intelligence, and um, 
that if we find out why there's a disharmony in the body, we can treat your disease or problem homeopathically. And that's actually how I got interested in alternative medicine because I developed severe asthma, which I'll talk about later. And the top specialist told me there's no cure for asthma, but one homeopathic remedy actually cured my asthma, cured it. That was 20 years ago and I haven't had a puff of my inhaler, haven't taken my Theodore. And I've seen actual cures with homeopathy. It's hard to believe that homeopathy makes an attempt to cure your disease. I don't care what your problem is. I believe that homeopathy can cure it. Now the next higher level is the spiritual approach. I believe that all healing comes from God and no matter what religion you believe in, there seems to be a higher power that can produce miracles. And my wife and I have been interested in miracles related to blindness. And we've traveled all over the world visiting all the sacred shrines and areas where the blind have been cured. And recently, even in the scientific literature, they've discovered that prayer has power. Uh, I'm going to show you a video on the power of eight. So when a group of people start to pray, and it seems to be eight or more, there's a positive effect. And that's one of the reasons why I like these group sessions. Because, oh, maybe about 15, 20 years ago, I would do sessions one-on-one. -on -one. So one person would come here, do the whole program, and it didn't seem to be the right energy. But it seemed like when we got a group of people together, you all become friends. You're, you're part of our family now. You know, you're, uh, I don't know, I'm going to go around your room and find out where you're from, but you have a new home in Florida. This is your new home. And speaking of the spiritual approach, this used to be a church. Uh, but I'm not on the altar. The altar's over there. So... Uh, and begin, talking about the power of eight, well, we have a small group here, but when you count the staff, we have eight people, and the staff and myself, my wife, we, we, you know, we pray for all of our patients. And I think there is. You don't have to believe in God. Uh, you know, I think there is a certain amount of power in prayer. So let's go around the room. If you could introduce yourself, where you're from, uh, your eye problem, and what your goals so you were subject to that lowest level of healing, right. surgery, yes. not really treating you. You got a cataract, just cut it out. You got glaucoma, have an operation. Mm -hmm. Not really treating the underlying problem. Cut it off. Cut it off. So unfortunate uh, that, and I'm not against surgery because I do a lot of mission work. Mm -hmm. And when we go to a third world country, like we were in Liberia, uh, people, young people, 17, eight year, 18 years old, are blind from cataracts. And I can't sit down and talk to them about nutrition, changing their diet. I mean, these people are lucky to get one meal a day. And so surgery is indicated. But we're fortunate here in the United States that we have the luxury of looking at our underlying problem. What is the cause of our cataract? And we, we can address that. No, we have a lot of patients that come from the UK. Yeah. Quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. And it's always nice to come here in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. The weather's really delightful. Well, I stayed with family in um, Atlanta. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. came down mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, welcome. And sir? Yeah, you know, we have so many therapies to help macular degeneration. The microcurrent. And I spent uh, two weeks in Italy studying with Dr. Limely. He has uh, developed a new technique for stem cell. Although I don't like my patients to jump right into stem cells, I think that there's so many therapies you can do before stem cells. And the stem cell is uh, it's a lot of discussion and critics know that we can go and blind and things like that. No? Yeah, there was uh, two, actually two cases in Florida where two people went blind, but it was done, wasn't done properly. It was. Uh, done by two nurses, wasn't even done by an eye doctor. So there's a lot of unscrupulous people out there who are selling stem cells, selling a magical cure. And, uh, you know, stem cells can be a great adjunctive or supporting treatment, but it should not be the primary treatment. 
And so many of my patients will get stem cells at the six-month visit after they get their body stronger and we try to treat the underlying problem. Many, many people. But I think I'm getting better results with microcurrent light therapy and homeopathy. So I spend all that money with stem cells and have that additional risk. I'd much rather do safe, conservative treatment. So my goal is to do everything I can to improve your vision. When you leave here, I want you to tell me that you have an improvement of vision. That's my goal. So we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Yes, you're the patient? Yes. Um, you know. hmm. Well, there's a strong connection between the gut and the eye. More and more doctors have looked at the problems with the gut, problems with your brain, uh, circulation. There's a strong relationship. So you need a healthy gut. We'll talk about that. And uh, also in homeopathy, we look at the whole person. You know, we look at stress, other factors. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're, today, uh, this morning, we're going to do a lot of extensive diagnostic testing. Maybe some additional testing that you never received before. We do electrophysiological testing, visual fields. Uh, even though you may have had that before, I want to repeat it here as a baseline. Then we're going to begin uh, your treatments. You'll be meeting with me every day. I'll be talking to you uh, specifically about your condition, what we need to do for you. And uh, also, we're going to be having a lecture every afternoon. That's an opportunity for you to ask questions. I'll be, today, I'm going to be speaking on uh, diet and nutrition, food is our best medicine, proper hydration, and reducing stress. Also, during the day, we have three or four videos for you to watch to kind of reinforce what I talk about. And then we're also going to be getting an intravenous therapy every day. So we're going to be busy. We're going to be busy. But um, it's important that you relax. The staff is here to help you. I'm available for you anytime. You'll be talking to me every day, so you're, you're part of our family. So we, I feel very strongly that it's important that you do relax and are calm and, and be in a healing environment. I know that some of you may have a lot of stress when you turned on that dirt road coming to this place. What in the world? This famous eye doctor, what is he doing back here? Well, we're away from the hustle and bustle, you know, instead of being on a strip mall and pollution and cars, it's, we're in the country, it's very peaceful. And, uh, you know, the healing comes from nature. So you couldn't be in a more quiet place. The only thing you might hear is some birds and an alligator maybe croaking, so. <laughs> Armadillo, yeah. yeah. So any questions before we get started? So I want to welcome you here and uh, really grateful that you traveled all this way. And um, I'm pretty confident that at the end of these uh, four days, it's going to be very rewarding for you, and you will have an improvement of vision, and you'll leave with the understanding and knowledge of what you have to do to continue your eyes to improve. Not only your eyes, but your general health. Okay, so let's get started. Ladies, we're ready to go?